I bet you you weren't expecting this. So today we're going to be marking as well our 50k subscribers. So I wanted to bring you a subject that's truly a passion of mine, which is matte painting. And as many of you may know, matte painting was really what got me started. It was one of the big things that really got my name out there. I mean, I got invited to, I remember it was DICE, Electronic Arts in Sweden for interviews. I, I was invited to work for Halo 4 in Access Animation. I did not go, unfortunately, because Archviz was my thing, and it is my thing, and I love it. I'm an architect, and by trade and profession, I've worked as an architect, and I just love it. And this piece that I've created that I'll be explaining to you about these matte painting techniques was something I did in my own personal time. So before that, I'd like to introduce to you also our new website. So we've basically rebranded. The team is growing and continues to grow. If you want to apply, also check out below in the description. Uh, we're always on the lookout for talented people. Um, technical, if you're technical, if you're really 3D savvy, if you're artistic in a post-production way, all spectrums are really important to us. So please drop us a line and that will be great. So let me tell you a little bit about this piece and how I created it. So this was basically an exercise for me. Uh, I don't know how many of you do, do jogging or, or do sports. I'm sure quite a lot of you uh, do running, uh, swimming, whatever. It's, that's extremely important as well. Healthy mind, healthy body. And basically what I decided to do was kind of look at this as exercise. So physical, mental, whatever. It, this particular case was a creative and mental exercise. So I, I, I was publishing this on Facebook uh, when I started. So I thought I'm going to do a map painting. And I thought I've learned with Dylan Cole, I've learned with Jonas Debreu, I've learned with all these classical guys who are amazing at what they do, right? And I decided, well, I'm going to share that process of how I worked on this. So I started for about eight, nine days doing this. And every day I would kind of hit a high and think, this is looking really good. I'm really excited about this. And then the next day I would go, no, this is not so good. And this is a very kind of interesting curve. And this curve, I also have an example. I'm going to see if I can put that on screen. And that, that basically is the evolution of a piece. So there is no linear creation point. It does not go start to end without interruption, no matter how much experience you have, no matter how good you are. It doesn't work that way. Uh, the better you get, the more you'll have this fluctuation, but the more you understand about this fluctuation of how to create a piece. Now, I thought this was amazing to see the process and share with you guys, and you guys also know that. And if you do that exercise, you will get better. I keep getting asked by people, so um, how do I do this, how do I do that? And it all comes down to practice, 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 practice in everything. Even, even if you don't have the time, if you find half an hour, 40 minutes, whatever, every day, and you keep practicing, you will see the major differences and how you can get better at what you're doing. So today we're going to be speaking about a couple of really essential techniques. And these are the ones that I find that they're so basic. And you guys are going to see, and you're going to say, Pedro, is this really everything? And then say, no, but it's about 75%. And well, it's about 25%. 75 other percent is practice, 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 as I continue to say. And you can't get anywhere. There are no shortcuts without practice. You can be as inspired, as creative as you want. I've never, I've never met a person who's a super creative person who's not a hard worker. You have to keep producing. This is the only way to get somewhere and to actually be really good at what you do and to master something. Now, I don't master this. This is not my full-time profession, but I hope you can translate these ideas and techniques into your paintings. So here we are with our matte painting. And as you guys have known, and as you can see on screen, this is pretty much what we ended up with. Um, before anything, as with all projects, it all starts with the reference, right? So I made a small mood board, and I believe these were, these three were kind of the ones, uh, this one by Dylan Cole, this one is a pack from Photobash, and that was kind of the base photo that everything got decided off. And at the same time, it was really important to understand everything. Now, the great thing about this and these photo packs, and even the ones we've done with Autumn, whatever, is that you get assortment of photos that have a very similar treatment, right? So I could basically use a lot of these 
to, to paint and as a base. Now it's always easier to start with a base. Now that's going to lead me to my first tip and my first trick and technique in matte painting, which is actually relighting something when you're bringing it in and it's not exactly from the same photo. So before we get into that, I'm just going to deconstruct this. So from the base up, now this is divided in lots of layers, as you can see. And basically, this is not the way that it was done and conceived. It was not just let's resolve the base and let's go through it. But it shows you how everything is kind of matching that initial photo. And then you have your grade, which kind of gives it that oomph. Now, remember, you can grab this PSD. Now, the one important thing I wanted to show you, and I believe I learned this many years ago, and I think it was through Dylan Cole, if I'm not in error, but was basically to relight. Now, relighting, let's see if I can find here like a good example. So we have our castle ruins, right? Now, I'm just going to bring this to the top of everything, and I'm going to just show you basically what it is. Now, as you can see, this kind of has, I knew the direction of the lighting where it was coming from, and it was coming from here, right? And I knew, let me just put a color that's more visible on screen. So I knew that it was coming from here, right? Uh, so what did I want to do? I basically, I just rubbed out what I didn't need. Uh, as you can see, that shows you a little bit better what I didn't need, so that's all rubbed out. And at the same time, if I hadn't actually put anything on that, any adjustments, that would be a little too bright, right? And it's not really fitting in. So the first one I did, and this is always the important thing. So these are the main steps to bringing in something and adjusting it to your base plate. So the first step is color right so color is one of the main things that you have to deal with now i believe i desaturated this i could have even gone a little more and basically this is one of the big things so always take out a little bit of color the next thing that you have to worry about is your levels so it's basically your values now you'll notice that i basically what i did is i wanted to punch out a lot of that white so what am i going to do i'm going to bring out bring darken the white point so that's a bit different than doing this which is brightening the white point so as I do that and take this down I really get rid of all that contrast that it has in the image next thing I even add a little more color balance so that that's again so I've taken color I've done the levels for the values so I can get the values and next I want to do is just adjust slightly the color so it matches the base but now here is the great trick right so if we didn't have these two on top we basically would end up with a very neutral piece now what I've done is think think about this as light and color right so light and color where we have our light face so very important to also choose photos that actually have the correct lighting on their faces. So make sure that, you know, if this was a flat photo, it's okay if it's foggy and uh, it's an overcast day, they're generally good because you can light the faces. But at the same time, if it's not, it's a very sunny, very contrasty, it's quite hard to relight. Now I was quite lucky with this one because I already had a similar, a similar lighting technique. So the next thing I do is basically Bring this one forward so I just alt and grab it let's just get rid of this uh, delete this layer mask right so we see all our photo now I'm just gonna alt click to isolate that now what I can do is create a high contrast mask right so that what's that gonna do it's gonna show you what it does so if I create that high contrast mask it will darken all the all the um, it will darken all all the faces that are in shadow and bring out all the ones that are in light. So what do I do? I'm gonna put that down there. Now I'm gonna basically set that to screen. And as you can see, that's making everything that's in light pop. Now, another thing I can do, let's say I wanna colorize it. I can actually colorize it to have the color of the sun that I want. And that just helps bring out the, the, the light within the image and actually match it to the plate. Now I've created a mask and let me just select a soft brush just to bring it back so i just controlled i inverted and i'm just going to slightly brush in that mask 
and that way I can have full control over the lighting. And you'll notice that, again, it's all about composition and playing the eye. And that, my friends, it really comes down to training your eyes and getting everything going. And as you can see, that's starting to match. Now, basically, I didn't do that too well. So let me switch on these, which I duplicated. I actually just duplicated the bottom one. And let me just put this to show you. If I take off everything, just exactly what I did for that. So, if, ah, and I took the, the fill down. So this was basically what I set, and I set it to screen. Now, this is better than actually working with levels, because what this does, it actually brings out the information that we have in the image, right? It actually brings out the information rather than duplicating the information. So if I take this off, and I just bang of levels on it it's harder for the levels to extract or I could use a curves even it's a bit harder but I'm not using the actual information from the photo it's always best to use the information from the photo and it just looks better and it just has a more natural feel to it lastly but not least you'll notice that when I actually zoom in there's a lot of differences between the photos and the assets that I've used now it's quite important to actually try and use as similar as possible assets so basically things that are similar in the noise so you'll notice for instance that this one is much more it's much more pixel information in comparison to this one now it's important to know what resolution you're outputting right so I really wasn't going to take the time to get into super detail and painting everything up because that's not half as fun <laughs> as it could be uh, so what I basically knew that I was doing is I was outputting at about, I don't know, 2000 pixels by a thousand, right? Close to HD. Now you'll notice that I was working at 5,000 pixels. So in reality, once I merge everything and I punch that down, you'll notice, uh, when I come down to image size, it's 2000 pixels. Now that is the thing. It's like if, if you're outputting at that quality, you really cannot see that much of a big difference when you crunch everything down and that's a really kind of uh, a really small trick but it's used in the industry now of course this depends on your pc and how far you go now i hope you guys have enjoyed it i know it's a short one i did want to say hello i did want to put something to show you guys and at the same time don't forget to hit our subscribe button right below so you can join our channel and keep up to date with everything that's happening. I'm just going to leave you with a little bit of a time lapse of the process. Don't forget, you can actually grab this PSD and support our channel or actually grab the tutorial narration that we're going to create. And it's on promo at the moment and pre-sale. And I look forward to your comments and feedback. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, all the best from Pedro Fernandez and Aki9Learn and Aki9Visualization. See you soon, guys.